For thousands of years, Inuit have lived on the land, water, and ice that make up Inuit Nunagat. As the climate changes and the ice melts, more and more people begin to take an interest in our homeland and the waters that connect it from east to west, known by southerners as the Northwest Passage. Those in the south see the opening of the passage to shipping as an opportunity for increased industry and tourism. The people in this film see this shift from a different perspective. They represent a diversity of voices from across Inuit Nunangat, as well as the traditional territory of Inuit in Greenland and Alaska. They tell us about some of the changes they have seen and the indelible impact of these changes on our way of life. If it wasn't for the for the ocean and the green mammals and the fish, I'm sure we wouldn't be here today as a people. My name is Frank Kubushemi. My name is Roman Snow. My name is John Oksana Jr. Abraham Kubluy. Teresa Hollett. My name is Cyrus Harris. Charlotte Wolfe. I'm Gavin Greenley. My name is Pamela Gross. Uh, Joe Yanatuk. My name is James Simon. Uh, Lauren Shorter. Carla Palma. Kayan Hartshar. Caitlin Bakey. Justin Milton. Baba Peterson. Mia Otokrat. I'm If we didn't have the ocean, we wouldn't have our communities that uh, exist there. The ocean is embedded to all parts of the culture. Well, the ocean is uh, it's a refrigerator, it's a provider. We rely on the ocean for a lot of our sea mammals, so it, it's basically our garden. <laughs> We take a lot. We harvest a lot from the from the sea. Fish, shellfish, seals, polar bears, all the wildlife. Because we're on an island, we travel across the ice or to water to go to the mainland or just to go to different parts of the island to go hunting or camping. The ocean has given me a uh, livelihood now for the last 26 years. It's where we get our food. It's where Malay mm -hmm. lives. It's a part of who we are. We, we live right on the ocean. We fish from it. We hunt from it. In the winter, we're traveling on it. Spring, we're going ice fishing. And then in summer, we're going out on our boats and we're fishing. So it's all year round important. While you're doing those practices, you're also practicing your Inuit culture. So you're passing down your language, your traditions, your stories by being on the ice and harvesting through the ocean, the different forms of the ocean. So it means a lot for my community. I think made Inuit who they are. Without the ocean, I don't think we'd have Inuit people. Our culture recognizes that this is a land of uh, resources, we can trace back stories of things that took place many years ago and, and those oral traditions are now passed down to us and there's certainly a high importance. I actually caught my first, first whale in Resolute Bay and so that's a big milestone in, in my Inuit identity and it happened in the Northwest Passage so definitely it's, I identify it with as being Inuit. Inuit culture absolutely sees the Northwest Passage as something important to our language and to cultural practices. Northwest Passage. I guess I think about the Franklin Expedition. The Franklin Expedition was the one we were told most about. A lot of people think it's not as explored. To some people it's the last frontier that they want to discover, they want to go and explore it. My father told me a story about the, the location of the Franklin ship and it's exactly where they claim to have discovered it. If they listened to traditional knowledge in the first place, they would have found it a lot quicker. Uh, my family members, my friends, even the communities doesn't really talk about explorers. 
but I I know them through a bit of school, a bit of internet. I remember back in elementary school learning that our ancestors were involved with some of the early exploratory efforts. The Northwest Passage is only seen by a lot of people as just a passage from Europe to Asia, but I'm trying to avoid seeing it as just for like explorers for cruise ships. That's Inuit land. I believe the Northwest Passage is, is rightly Canadian regardless of if you're from the Arctic regions or your ancestry is Inuk. It's the one place in, in, in the world that's pristine and hasn't really been affected by modern day. When you see like cruise ships, cargo ships, all those going to the Northwest Passage, I get mixed feelings about that. And back when there was a lot of ice, we weren't so concerned because there was no ship passage. But now, things have changed. Now it's become important that we keep an eye on it. Some places in the world, maybe it's best that they be left the way they are, just to preserve itself, right? In the time uh, a new development happens in regards to the Northwest Passage, people talk about it because it, it will affect them. We've been having uh, like uh, meetings regarding shipping and the concerns that we might have and what the benefits or negative impacts that might take place. It's not something that we talk about every day, but the topic does come up once in a while and when, when incidents happen. Well, if the topic's brought up, I can talk about it, but I don't bring it up because, I don't know, maybe it's something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. I do talk about shipping and the Northwest Passage with my family and with uh, different community members because it's something that will affect all of the North and Inuit culture. Where I spend a lot of time on the coast of where I come from now, we see a lot of ships like heading north, I guess, with supplies, a lot of tugboats and barges and stuff. The private ships and the smaller sailboats, they have increased a lot in the last five to ten years. I think it's increasing now, especially the cruise ships. And right now where it stands, we don't even know who's coming and when they're coming. In our community, we're getting more and more ships going by. And I'm only speaking of the ships that we see. We are informed that there's hundreds more that we don't see. It's a lifeline now for, uh, for the communities, for supplies, food, and just everyday necessities. The fishing industry brings in millions and millions of dollars of economic benefits to the Inuit and the Inuit communities. And hopefully that improves as we go along. The only benefit I can see really is in the summer when it's open water to bring in supplies that, you, that aren't readily available within your community. We look forward to having the supply ships come every summer. We'll get our supplies, our yearly supplies of fuel and year supplies of food and stuff and it's cheaper to go by the ships instead of paying by airfare. Because we have no road systems, we only have air connections, any of our large items have to come in by ship. Now when you consider the high cost of food, the high cost of living, what's the best, cheapest way to help Northerners when it comes to dealing with those issues? The corporations where they have and own huge inventories of ships, they get the benefits. For our Inuit population, we don't have the infrastructure to support them, so I don't think it's going to benefit us very much. Maybe more so for outsiders than people within the area. It's a sad reality, I think, that we need to consider. Yeah, there's major negative impacts towards our way of life, what shipping may do to the wildlife, to the pristine waters, to the environment, whether it's pollution or wrecks. Any shipping disaster would take years to clean up. Of the mammals we depend on for food, how much will they be affected by shipping? How much will our hunting routes be affected? 
If there are more ships coming, it will disturb the marine mammals and we wouldn't have any marine mammals to feed on. So we have to ensure that they're not being destructive to the traditional areas that they're going to and when they come to the community that they're being respectful of Inuit and our communities. Not to get too many ships come up to our community or especially in the winter time coming up through the ice. The ice freezes over and the ships still try to go through. It would open up the ice again and then animals can't migrate across. Last year, there was a ship that crossed late in the season and it kept people stranded when they went out caribou hunting. They had to wait for the ocean to freeze so that they could cross and come back home. Shipping to the Arctic could economically benefit us. I see it as a viable travel route, but not a preferable one, just because in terms of the ecosystem, there's way too much risk. There's environmental impacts. You might not notice them now, you might not notice them next year, but over the years, it could easily be impacting the environment. <laughs> Ships are loud, you know, and there's discharge of who knows, invasive species maybe that leach on to the, to the bottom of the ships. But I think about the big ships that are probably going to come up there to exploit the resources. It raises a lot of questions. What is it going to mean for the people that live there? What kind of implications is it going to have on the wildlife? It means destroying a travel route and potential contaminants and pollutants. The negative impacts for shipping haven't, haven't been proven out yet because um, we're in the early stages of the learning of the industry. I see a lot of potential for unique communities to grow economically as the North Rift Passage becomes more accessible. But if the infrastructure is not invested in the communities, it'll take away more than we will get out of it. Everything has a ripple effect. What kind of ripple effect will shipping have on Inuit life? It's kind of a scary thought. People outside of the Arctic are interested in shipping and getting supplies there and invested for economical reasons. Because it will bring a lot of economic benefit for those that are able to travel the Northwest Passage. They're interested in the natural resources and the bounties that can be got from the North. Exploration for oil and gas. I think they're interested for commercial reasons and to make more money for Southerners. Profit. Gain. They want money. It's all about money. Money. That's uh, bottom line. Any discussion that is going to occur that has to deal with shipping needs, the Inuit people need to be involved. They need to consult with any of the communities that are affected by whatever route that they're taking. And then immediately after that to include Inuit within their own ownership and organizational levels to have Inuit participating. The shipping company should have better respect to the hunters especially because they're the one who's getting affected. There should be more interaction. If you're not talking to the right people who are getting affected, I would say you have no communication system that's working properly. Get conditions set by communities who are involved, but it's up to the government to enact those um, legislation uh, to protect our waterways. To let the community know in general when they'll be here, how long they'll be here, and and just what they're going to be doing here. To remember the human face to the whole 
shipping aspect, not just somebody sees you know, big money dollars and then jump for it. It's the people that live there that you're seriously impacting. If we went and said, well, we're going to make lakes and freeze the ice or whatever, and, you know, on your roadways, how would they feel, you know? Any change in the ecosystem, any change in the environment, it's going to affect us and we're the ones there before shipping happens and we're the ones who are going to be there after. We want to make sure we, we keep regulations so that outsiders don't hurt our livelihood from gathering off of the ocean. The best way to sustain it is what I see now is traditions being passed down. Keep teaching hunting. Got to keep on hunting as we have for, you know, all them years. The way we're taught from our ancestors and our elders is to take what you need. Take only what you need. If you need one char, you get one char. Not go out and get a hundred char because that would have an impact on tomorrow. There's long-standing effects that'll be affecting future generations. They may not know the foods that we know. They may not be able to recognize landscapes that have been destroyed by shipping in whatever way. I think shipping in the Northwest Passage, especially all year round for Northern and Inuit youth could potentially mean a significant loss of culture. I believe it's it can perpetuate or speed up the uh, cultural assimilation of our people. My grandchildren will never have opportunity like what I have gone through 20 years ago to travel on the ice. I've been there, I've been a hunter with my grandparents living on the land to becoming this person who works in an office 8.30 to 5. I buy my food now. I'm not the hunter that my grandparents brought me up to be. So shipping and resource development in the north could be good, it could be bad. Considering where things were 20 years ago for me and where they are now, what's another 20 years going to be like for others? Um, the entire coast where I come from now was uh, isolated communities. And all of a sudden, a few years ago, with the possibility of uh, forestry becoming uh, a good moneymaker for the province, they decided to build a road through there. And there was an old guy I was talking to one day from one of these communities, and he said to me, the only thing that road ever did for us was assured that our, our young people got in their vehicles and left and never came back. And I think the same thing could possibly happen with uh, with shipping. I'd always for it now is for the government to listen to the people on the ground, to the people in areas where shipping will take place. Listen to those communities, consult with them, see where the concerns uh, lie, because it's our home, it's our traditional territory. We have to be part of that industry so that we benefit economically for our own purposes. I definitely want to see shipping increase. I see it as a really good opportunity to benefit Inuit and to benefit Canada because it can become central to the world market and to continue our cultural practices while developing a sustainable economy. Shipping is still going to happen and we can't stop that. And the North of Passage is going to be there. We should learn about the ships that are coming here, but the ships that are coming here, the people on them should learn about us as Inuit. There's a lot of unknowns and, and I think things are being rushed to it. So uh, folks need to be careful. People have been wanting access to the Northwest Passage for a long time and they're soon gonna get it. So <sighs> all I can do is sigh. I'm not pro-development, I'm not anti-development. I'm just, it really worries me about Drilling in the ocean because we as a people, the coastal people, we depend on it so heavily that, you know, 
the way of life I know it is gone. My identity is going to be gone. And how do you put a price on that? You can't. There's, you know, there's, when you talk about animals and, and, and oceans and, and the earth, you can never put a price tag on something like that. We are the farmers of the north, where we get to take care of the environment. You always want to leave the ocean and the land in at least the same condition it is now or in better shape for your future generations to come. Stop, take your time and assess the situation prior to a making decision. Make the best of what you've got. Think about how to move forward. Keep on hunting. Protect your hunting. Keep doing what we're doing and just be aware of the ships and stuff that's going around. Well, I'd encourage our younger generations to, you know, really look into it and understand what's happening in our waters. Talk to the elders if something big is going to happen in regards to uh, the Northwest Passage that could be affecting the community in a positive or negative light. <laughs> As an Inuit, we should be more controlled over our territory. Inuit need to have a say in what is happening in their homeland. Either that or totally say, no, we don't want it, and protest. You have to look at the big picture and, and you have to, I think, intervene when it's necessary. If there's going to be any shipping through that channel, if our land, our, our home is not going to be respected, that will take whatever steps we need to demand that respect. We're stewards of our own land, you know, and I think we got to always remember that, you know, and respect it. Thank you.